Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Bible. Wait, what? Good to have you. I'm sitting down with Annalise Forbes again today, and we have got uh, this week's episodes are some gnarly they chapters, are. aren't they? Yeah, they are. It's really good to be back to start with. It is good. With. We're actually recording but this the week that your first one Yeah, has, we are, yeah. Has um, the broadcast. convenience of it all. But, it really yeah, helped. definitely some curly topics in this in this week's in episodes. this week's episode so yeah. it's going to be a good chat Annalise just told me she had lots of notes <laughs> so we're in I do I came well prepared I've been on <laughs> uni holidays for four weeks or something now so I felt like I needed to get back into were you study in, mode in study mode so you thought let's just get <laughs> yeah into the I was Bible. like let's get into the Bible <laughs> well and uh we have just I was just telling Annalise this is the first time we're recording this way even though it, it's chapter 11 but we've mm. decided to change the way we do our format and release them a day a chapter a day. We record it as a bulk. Yeah. And then a chapter a day, Monday to Friday, to release them so that uh, it won't be so long for you yeah. to listen yeah. each day. But, yeah. But we're going to do chapter 11 today. We are. And, and these are um, these are the whole story, probably some of the most famous story in the Bible. The whole, yeah, absolutely. You know, David and Bathsheba thing. Yeah. David and Goliath and David and Bathsheba are probably among two of the more famous stories. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. David's actually one of my favorite people from the Bible as well. So as soon as this got put up and we got to choose, I was like, yes, I'm going with David oh, for good sure. For you. Oh, he is one of my favorites yeah. too. There's just so much we can study in these books. Yeah. In fact, I was, I was disappointed we couldn't do 1 Samuel as well, yeah. uh, but it didn't fit into our schedule. Yeah. So we kind of started with 2 Samuel, which is the start of his life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So we're going to get, do uh, chapter 11 today, which um, I should you know, kind of let you know, listeners, that there is some pretty confronting stuff in these passages, yeah, there especially is. Yeah, well, in several of these chapters this mm-hmm. week. So just be careful. If you're triggered by anything, please, uh, you might want to skip over these episodes yeah. or at least be aware that there is some sensitive issues. And we'll probably have to touch on some of that yeah, in the yeah. episode in order to make sense of it and try and unravel some of the complexities of this passage. So just be mindful of the sensitive, especially if you're listening in the car and you've got kids around, yeah, just be definitely. careful. It's probably not necessarily the best format for no, probably listening not. to some of this stuff. <laughs> um, there's a various kinds of quite uh, confronting information in these passages. Yeah. Which is the story of real life analysts. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. It It is. Like mm. you can see throughout all of these chapters, um, connection to our own life where if it's, not the sin that David's done, that it's something that we've done that we can pull from his experience yes. and learn from. So yes. yeah, it's it's all quite confronting. It certainly is. But there's so much to learn from it. So it's really important to study it. It is good. That's exactly right. Um, we need to allow it to confront us and then mm. find the nature of God in it and find mm. the nature of our own hearts and yeah. our own sinful tendencies. Yeah, in. absolutely. All right. Well, let's jump into chapter 11. So awesome. where would you like to begin with all your We're notes? We're going to start in verse one. Okay. And from verse one, I was like, the red flags are waving, the sirens are going <laughs> off. And it's so interesting in verse one, because it says in the spring at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab at out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Abanites and besieged Rab- Rabba. Rabba. Yep. yep. I'm going to butcher words. I'm really oh, that's sorry. All right. But David remained in Jerusalem. And the as soon as I read the, but David remained in Jerusalem, like the red flags are waving so much because it, it's so interesting that he stays behind in a time where kings go off to war, mm. especially when you see earlier in 2 Samuel that he has been on the battlefield and he's told by God to go out to the battlefield yep. and he's staying behind. It's and this is the same David that yeah. went out and took on Goliath yeah, when yeah, he was a exactly. young boy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's already putting himself in a position that's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's already raising mm. warnings for the reader. Like it it's like a is. big warning sign on the wall. that's saying warning, warning. I like what the way you, you put doing? that. Like, in the spring, yeah. kings go out to war. Guess what? The king but didn't. David did it. <laughs> yeah, the exactly. king didn't. Yeah. So it's, it's already like sparking something for yes. this. So it's like, this story is not going to be one that's particularly happy and things no. are, things are going to go wrong. Yes, and it spirals very quickly. It does. And it will spiral for the next five chapters pretty yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. Every single one of these chapters is a l- si- linked back slip- to chapter 11. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, in some way. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's interesting to note, though, that this is not actually the kind of the start of the events that kind of lead yep, tell me to more. who... Um, 
to the sin that follows mm-hmm. in these chapters. Like you can see that David already has issues from other chapters in 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel where he disregards God's plan for marriage and has multiple wives and things like that. That's kind of the beginning of the downfall. But this particular moment is like a key turning yeah, point in I the like story. That's the good way to put it. Yeah. yeah it's a point and where it, it definitely is set up for us as listeners and yeah. as readers to realize it's a pivotal moment yeah. in the direction of his life, yeah. the direction of his family's life, and ultimately the different direction of the, the nation of Israel. Will yeah, take. absolutely. It's like that small corrupt seed yep. that has always been there has finally come to yep. fruition in this moment yep. and everything's about to about to change. Mm. Which is interesting, isn't it? Because King David, I mean, he's a, described as a man after God's mm. own heart. He, Jesus calls him, you know, Jesus is the son of David, mm. comes from this line. David writes many of the Psalms and yet he's still messed up. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So it, we, we m- m- have to handle that tension yeah. between God still using a person who has their own issues, their own yeah. sin still in their heart. They have yeah. to with. And I'm, I'm just grateful. It does show, shows the the justice of God, it also shows the mercy of God as we read this story. Yeah, and it's very reassuring to us as Christians who know that we have at one time or another fallen into the trap of sin to know that God's not just going to abandon us and not use us. He's still got a plan for us and he knows our sinful way, but he's willing and he loves us so much that he's going to still work with us and still forgive us and everything like that. That's for sure. Well, yeah. So it's a very reassuring story. It is. It's, it's reassuring yeah. despite the ha- hassles. God doesn't completely yeah. give up. Yeah, Amen. absolutely. And mm. then in the following chapters, after we kind of get this first warning flag, David, we can see in verse two that he's walking around the palace and he's not quite, he's not quite okay with everything that's going on. And he, it seems a bit like he is uneasy with this situation that's going on because he sees this woman bathing outside and he says that she's very beautiful. And then he asks a bit more about her, but I just want to go back to that verse two, where it says he was walking around and we know that that's an uneasy kind of feeling because the Hebrew word in that verse, when you translate it, it's a form of walking that suggests that he was Pacing, pacing, pacing and anxiously. And yeah, okay. walking backwards and forwards Very, and anxious. And you have been studying. I have been studying. Very good. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. So the I, I don't actually have what the Hebrew word was and right. I would no. not have been able well, to that, say that's anyway. That's a really but, significant change in the story because I've yeah. always imagined, no, he's had an afternoon rest, he's getting up, he's going yeah. for a wander on the roof. Yeah. But it's different if there's yeah. an anxiety in his yeah. spirit. Maybe he's thinking, what am I doing here? Yeah. When I should be out there. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of when you've got that kind of anxious moment or you've got that uneasy feeling that kind of cracks the door mm. open for temptation to yep. come on in, which is exactly which what is we exactly see what happens in, the, story. in the following verses mm. where he asks for this woman's detail details and who she is and all that kind of stuff. And then she finds out that he finds out those details and then starts opening the door even a little bit further. Yep. And then he ends up sending a messenger to get her and he sleeps with her, takes her home, everything like that. She then later finds out that she's pregnant, but that woman is married to another man yep. who's part of David's armies. Who's actually out there where yeah, David should yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. And you just see that each little step in this story led to the downfall of David yep. in this situation. I heard it described years ago, like each little uh, step in the story is like wrapping a piece of cotton around mm. you. I, I do it as a like a Sunday school or a youth mm. group example. If you've got one or two pieces of cotton wrapped around you, you can break them. But you start to get five, six, seven, ten pieces of yeah. cotton wrapped around you, which is David's downward spiral. Eventually, it'll get to the point where you could have broken out into any one yeah. or two, but eventually you're so far in that yeah. there's no way out. Yeah, and that's exactly. kind of what happens to David in yeah. the story. Yeah, absolutely. And we can kind of see that David's attention from the first verses of this um of this chapter his attention is not where god wanted his attention to be he, god wanted his attention on the battlefield where kings are supposed to be yep. but david is not and that leaves open space for the enemy to come in and to it sure does to be the downfall yep. so someone. how can we apply that in our context in terms of you know being aware i think it, it's, a, it's a character lesson mm. for us in that 
if we don't put ourselves in places where we know we should be yeah. and we don't avoid places where we know we shouldn't be, yeah. then we open ourselves up to yeah. certain things yeah, absolutely. that we otherwise wouldn't have even had a chance to be grabbed by. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Definitely. So there's, a, there's an element of the fruit of the spirit, self-control. Yeah. So there's an element of self-control that we need to get early on. Mm. And be aware of. I like to say forewarned is forearmed. Mm -hmm. So if we can be aware, okay, I have a preclusive, uh, you know, a propensity towards whether it be a sexual sin or an anger issue mm. or, or, you know, a bitterness or a gossip issue or whatever areas we know our weak spots are. Yeah. Having some kind of uh, awareness of that and humility to say, hey, that's something that I could be affected by. Mm. Then it's a whole lot easier to recognize it up front and be where you need to be and avoid the places you shouldn't be. David would never have had this issue yeah, if he had been exactly where right. he should have been. Yeah. So that's a great character lesson for all of us to take, yeah. to take some time to stock and go, well, what are the weak spots? Yeah. Because we've all got them. Yeah, It'd exactly. It'd be different for all of us. But we, all yeah. have, we all have areas where our, our flesh is weak. Yeah. And I think being aware of those and then identifying those certain weak spots and avoiding them is just good common sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then that leads on into the consequences of that when when we're not in a place where God wants us to be. We can't see beyond True. Beyond that. And we don't see the consequence, the potential consequences of our action, or we might consider some of them, but not all of That's them. Right. Like it is a guarantee that David did not consider that this woman Bathsheba would become pregnant. No. No, it's not even <laughs> something that he considered. It never crossed his mind. And no. then I'm gonna see he does everything he can yeah. to try and avoid taking the blame yeah, for it. Yeah, exactly. It's just one consequence after another mm. that he would not have considered. I've got the list of consequences here, but they go beyond just him. They go. So you've got a list of them there? Yeah, I do. Why don't, why don't you hit them now? Because yeah. that's going to come up over this week's yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah. So the first one is obviously the unwanted pregnancy. Then there's the murder of a trusted friend, a dead baby, a daughter raped by her son, one son murdered by another son, a civil war led by one of his sons, one of David's sons, and a son who imitates David's lack of self-control, leading him and much of Israel away from God. There you go. And that's all in five chapters yeah, that we're talking about this Yeah, that's all in five chapters, that's, yeah. That's exactly yeah. what happens. And it all is linked back to this, this one moment this one yeah. moment where he wasn't where he should have been. Yeah. And if you had have said to Dave, hey, mate, look, this is going to be the end result of this yeah. moment. And he would have gone, oh, no. I'll just go I'll to just the go battlefield about where I should be. Yeah, exactly. You know, he, he didn't set. And this is how sin is. Yeah. We, we don't set ourselves up thinking that about the end result. We think no, that'll exactly. be okay. Yeah. And that that's such a powerful lesson. Yeah. That yeah. list is worth just going back and rewinding, and listening <laughs> to again, because that's as good a summary as you'll get of the yeah. next five chapters of this, yeah. of this uh, story. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a ripple effect of how one sin leads to another sin, whether yeah. it's our own sin or somebody else's yeah. sin. It's just one big ripple effect exactly and the enemy is just waiting for one little creak in the door to come in and sweep you off your feet absolutely into a downwheel spiral yep, that's what happens yeah absolutely. indeed that's what happens absolutely where am i up to in my notes i got too many notes got so i don't know notes. where i'm up to i've seen the way you take notes. you're amazing <laughs> um yeah so we kind of can see in these verses that david just went out and took what he wanted as well and didn't consider anything like we just said. Yeah. But we see that that God is go, – um, David is going against God's plans and kind of saying my way is yep. better than your way. Like what I want is better than what you want for yep. me. But we know that that's not actually the case and it just ends in this downward spiral and that yep. God – what God wants for us is always far more satisfying than giving in to these earthly desires like David did. Absolutely. In fact, I would go, this is an important narrative. The way that the the author has written this narrative, mm. it's a direct superimposition over, mm. the, it's using all the same language as the Garden of Eden yeah. language as well. Yeah. So God says, don't eat that tree. Mm -hmm. David, it says, David saw Bathsheba, mm -hmm. he wanted Bathsheba, mm -hmm. he took Bathsheba. It's yeah. see, want, take yeah. language. Yeah. See, want, tank, take, end result, death. Yeah, exactly. Um, that is exactly the Garden of Eden moment. Yeah. yeah. For That's David's Garden of Eden yeah. moment. It's deliberately written that way. And this happens time and time again in the scripture because that is all our story. Mm -hmm. We all, God always says, hey, that's not going to be good for you. Yeah. But we want it. 
we think it, it actually says she looked good in his eyes is the actual mm-hmm. language it uses. That sounds exactly like yeah. what Eve said. Yeah, exactly. Fruit looked good in her eyes. Yeah. She wanted it and she took it. And so we all have that. We yeah. all have something that we go, oh, no, no we, we know better than God. Yeah. God said that won't be good for us, but we know we want that. That'll be yeah. good for us. That looks good. Yeah. We want it. We take it. And the end result is, is sin and yeah, death. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that kind of links into the fact that, you know, like Eve thought she got away with it for a moment there. Yep. And David thought he got away with it for a moment there until he found out that Bathsheba was pregnant and that yep. he actually wasn't going to get away with it. Nope. And then he instantly went to what can I do to get away with yep. it, not what can I do to to repent and be sorry for what I've done and to learn from it and to move on. Of course, on. none of us ever do that. No, no. <laughs> It's the human nature. Exactly. Is yeah. How do I cover up my yeah. shame? Yeah. How do I cover up my my sin? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And we can just see in this story that um, David sends a messenger out to get Bathsheba's husband yep. and to bring him in, and he tries to deceive him into going and being with yep. his wife so that so everyone, that everyone thinks, thinks that oh, this child is his. his. Exactly. But he, the um, the husband, is more. Um, noble yeah noble that's Mm. a good word for it Mm. he's more noble than david is in Mm. this situation and says no if my men are going to be out on the battlefield the king's men he says yeah yeah exactly to the king's men yeah exactly (laughs) he says that and he he's like no i can't go and drink wine and eat all this food and be with my wife if the king's men are going to be out on the battlefield so no i'm going to stay on the palace yeah yeah so that's what he does and then twice twice yeah yeah Twice. So David goes from trying to just make him happy, send him home, mm-hmm. go on home, go. That doesn't work. Next night gets him so blind drunk that mm-hmm. he thinks he'll go home, but he still maintains his yeah. integrity even the next night. Yeah. And that. Uh, and and it, the, the other thing about this Uriah, the husband, is he's he's a Hittite. He's yeah. not actually a Jew. No, exactly. He's a foreigner yeah. who has adopted God's ways yeah. and become a you know, join the Jewish people, mm. which makes the story even more amazing. Yeah. That a foreigner I- is a hero in this yeah. story while David is the villain. Yeah, exactly. And we just see um, David fall into that trap again and again, thinking, how can I get away with this? Yeah. How can I get away with this? And in the end, he um, basically sends Uriah out back onto the battlefield with his own death sentence yep. in his hand That's because right. he can't get, can't think of a way to get him to go and be with his wife so that everyone will think that this child is mm. his, not David's. And ultimately Uriah does get killed. Yep. And then David marries Bathsheba. Yep. Um, and he thinks that he gets he away with it. He thinks he's got away yeah, with it. He thinks he's got away with it again. Um, but that of course is not the case. And it's not until, where is the verse? It's not until, um, the very, very end of last the, verse, the, of the very chapter. last verse of the chapter that we actually kind of hear from God in the whole, or God's hear of God it, in the you? whole story. That's yeah, right. the last verse, the last sentence of the verse is, "But the thing David had done displeased the Lord," and that is the first time in the entire chapter that we kind of see God in this whole chapter. Exactly, right at the end. Yeah, but God, basically, it's like. You thought you got away with this, yeah, but actually, but God didn't. was watching. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. God witnesses everything, yeah. so there's no way that we can hide. There's no way we can cover up, regardless of how inherent that is in our human nature That's to try right. and cover up. God will always see, it just as He did with Eve exactly. as well. Yeah, and you know, it is this constant. Reminder that God sees mm. the innermost thoughts. Jesus says, you know, you will be called to give an account for every yeah. careless word. Yeah. You know, that's the sense that God is watching mm. everything. Mm-hmm. And that's just really important for us to understand. Mm. Um, it should be sobering. Mm. You know, not not God sitting up there with a big stick. He, he's just he's watching everything because he wants to yeah. honor and love the reward, but he can't allow this level of um, sin mm. to continue because ultimately it doesn't just destroy, like you said, it, the, the list of destruction yeah. is much broader than David. Mm. It's beyond him. It affects Uriah. It affects yeah. the child. It affects Bathsheba. And ult- it affects his family and ultimately it affects mm-hmm. the whole nation. So sin is sin is not something that we do that only affects us. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. 
it, it has lasting implications yeah. all around us because we are created for community. Yeah, exactly. We're communal beings. And so when there's brokenness in us and it, it leaks out of us in some way, it will affect yeah. those around us. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's very easy to think in our current society because we live in a very selfish society that nothing that you do is going to affect anybody else. And it just, everything that you do is only going to affect you. Yeah, just look you. after it's yourself. Just, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's very, the whole message of this story is very sobering to realize yeah. that, no, it's not There is just no such thing as ultimately me. you no. do you. You, no, you, exactly. you doing you will ultimately, if it's selfish focused, mm-hmm. I mean, if, if I'm, if I'm going to be true to myself and what I'm called to, that's, uh, you know, I'm not saying all you do you is wrong. It's good to actually be yourself and yeah. be authentic to the person God has called you to yeah. be, but that will ultimately be a blessing to other people. Mm-hmm. But when the message is, no, you just look after yourself. Yeah. You you take whatever you yeah. want for yourself. That's when we fall into the yeah. Garden of Eden trap yeah. again. And the end result is destruction for yeah. those around us. So I always say, you know, we take for ourselves is always at the expense of mm-hmm. others. We're told to be givers, not takers yeah. in yeah. God's kingdom. Yeah, that's exactly what's happened here. And you can see that the enemy is just chipping away yeah. at David in little pieces. Like there's no way that the enemy could have had all of this happened if you just presented it on a platter and said, David, take it all. (laughs) Exactly. You see him being chipped away from the start to the end of the chapter. It's just one thing after another, like a little chip and then a little chip and then a little chip. And before you know it, David is broken. Finds himself completely broken. Finds himself in this situation where he's got a woman pregnant who is not his wife. And has killed her husband and has still not gotten away with it because God saw it all. Yeah, that's right. It's probably the other thing that's worth mentioning, I think too, just so we understand the the way the narrative is set up. It's very easy to read this and assume that Bathsheba is a a willing party Mm. in this, but we need to, we must remember Mm. that we're talking about a severe imbalance of power here. Yeah. You know, Bathsheba had no option. Yeah. I'm not saying she didn't want to go. Yeah. I don't, we, it actually doesn't say anything about no, Bathsheba's character. But that point is you're supposed to realise as the reader that ultimately it's actually nothing to do with that. It's mm. ultimately about um, the fact that David, when the, the king summons, you go. Yeah. Regardless of whether you want to or yeah. not. Yeah. The consequences for her not doing it would have been far worse. That's exactly right. And I think when I was reading up on the chapters as well, I kind of came to the conclusion that They've got their own sin. Yes, their sin affected each other, but they do have their own sin and they will be held accountable yes. separately. So yep. David was is accountable for his sin, but Bathsheba would have also been accountable for any yes. sin on her any, behalf yeah, If there's any well. sin on her behalf, she would have yeah. been accountable for it. And ultimately her baby dies, mm-hmm. and we'll have to get to that in the, the, the next chapter. Yeah. But, or the chapter after, wherever it is. But um, that is, you know, that's a tragic thing yeah. to go through. Yeah, uh, So it isn't like anyone gets off the hook. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a, a reminder that but we in, are in today's, accountable. In today's climate, it's very worth recognising that we're dealing with um, a severe power imbalance yeah. in the story. Yeah. Because that's very much a, yeah. a thing that's affecting churches at the moment. It's affecting government yeah, at the moment. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And so having that good understanding that um, when there's power, mm. it can be abused. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. For sure. Yeah. Got any other notes on chapter 11? No, I think that's it. That's it. All right, well, we're done for that episode. Perfect. I'll be back with Chapter 12. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Bible. Wait, what? Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast so you don't miss a single episode. And you can also find us on all the socials. Just search The Bible. Wait, what? And to find out more about our church, just search C3 Camden, C3 Picton, or C3 Thoreau on the web or on the socials. Thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to talking to you on the next episode of The Bible. Wait, what?